I had lunch in town, had not been so hungry for years. The house was still lowless when I strolled back. I spent the afternoon musing, skimming, blissfully digesting my experience of the morning. I felt proud of myself. I had stolen the honey of a spasm without impairing the morals of a minor. Absolutely no harm done. The conjurer had poured milk, molasses, foaming champagne into a young lady's new white purse. And lo, the purse was intact. Thus, had I delicately constructed my ignoble, ard ardent, ardent, sinful dream, and still Lolita was safe, and I was safe. What I had madly possessed was not she, but my own creation, another fanciful Lolita, perhaps more real than Lolita, overlapping, in encasing her, floating between, he between me and her, and having no will, no consciousness, indeed no life of her own. The child knew nothing. I had done nothing to her, and nothing prevented me from repeating a performance that affected her as little as if she were a photographic image rippling upon a screen, and I, a humble hunchback, abusing myself in the dark. The afternoon drifted on and on, in ripe silence, and the sappy tall trees seemed to be in the known, and desire, even stronger than before, began to afflict me again. Let her come soon, I prayed, addressing a long god, and while Mama is in the kitchen, let a repetition of the Davenport scene be staged. Please, I adore her so horribly. No, horribly is the wrong word. The elation with which the vision of new delights filled me was not uh, horrible, but pathetic. I qualify it as pathetic. Pathetic because... Despite the insatiable fire of my venereal appetite, I intended with the most fervent force and foresight to protect the purity of what of that twelve year old child. And now see how I was repaid for my pains. No Lolita came home. She had gone with the Chatfields to a movie. The table was laid with more elegance than usual. Candlelight, if you please. In this mokish aura, Mrs. Hayes gently touched the silver of both sides of her plate, as if touching piano keys, and smiled down on her empty plate, was on a diet, and said she hoped I liked the salad, recipe lifted from a woman's magazine. She hoped I liked the cold cats too. It had been a perfect day. Mrs. Uh, Chatfield was a lovely person. Phyllis, her daughter, was going to a summer camp tomorrow, for three weeks, Lolita, it was decided, would go Thursday, instead of waiting till July, as had in, been initially planned, and stay there after Phyllis had left, till school began. A pretty prospect, my heart. Oh, how I was taken aback, for did I not mean, for did I not mean I was losing my darling, just when I had secretly made her mine. To explain my green mood, I had to use the same toothache I had already simulated in the morning. Must have been an enormous molar with an abscess as big as maraschino cherry. We have, said Hayes, an excellent dentist, our neighbor, in fact, Dr. Quilty, uncle or cousin, I think, of the playwright. Think it will pass? Well, just as you wish. In the fall, I shall have him brace her, as my mother used to say. It may carp low a little. I'm afraid she has been bothering you frightfully all these days, and we are in for a couple of stormy ones before she goes. She has flatly refused to go, and I confess I left her with the Chatfields because I dread to face her alone just yet. The movie may mollify her. Phyllis is a very sweet girl, and there is no earthly reason for Lowe to dislike her. Really, monsieur, I am very sorry about that tooth of yours. It would be so much more reasonable to let me contact Ivor Quilty first thing tomorrow morning, if it still hurts. And, you know, I think a summer camp is so much healthier and, well, it is also much more reasonable, as I say, than to mope on a superbound low and use Mama's lipstick and pursue shy, studious gentlemen and go into tantrums at the least provocation. Are you sure, I said at last, that she will be happy there? Name, Lamentable Ying. 
She'd better, said Hayes. And it won't be all play either. The camp is run by Shirley Holmes, you know, the woman who wrote Camp Fargel. Camp will teach Dolores Hayes to grow in many things, health, knowledge, temper, and particularly in a sense of responsibility toward other people. Shall we take the scandals with us and sit for a while on the piazza, or do you want to go to bed and nurse that tooth? Nurse that tooth.